Hey guys, Morphologist here. Hey guys, it's Wasted Space. And tonight we're talking about 1.096, a super exciting new update. Well, actually not so much, it's just bug fixes, but they did add a tweak to this update to the batteries. Yeah, that was really cool. Basically, they'd already updated the batteries in the previous patch, but what this meant was they'd actually listened to some of the community feedback on the forums, which was saying that, yeah, it's all well and good, the solar panels are better, the batteries are better, but they're not quite there yet. They're not really quite as useful as you need them to be. So it's cool to see that sort of feedback coming through and making this really a, a proper balancing thing. You know, they're listening to community feedback as well as trying to balance it on their end. And end result is... For survival mode, batteries, solar panels, they're all that much more usable and that much more intrinsic to the early game, which I really approve of, and I really approve of that whole feedback thing. Absolutely. I mean, the output and the input are both been increased, so, so that means that you're going to get more power out of them, and they're going to charge faster, and the amount of power they can store has also been increased. So that makes them very viable as backup power supplies when you're going between power sources for, say, uranium for your reactor. But anyway... That, that was, I think, pretty interesting, but what the most interesting thing that I think that happened this week was on Tuesday when Mark posted his blog about the stabilization period for medieval engineers. So let's talk about that for a little bit. Now, honestly, that's not particularly good for us in this particular series, just because obviously this means that we're going to be talking much more about the future of the game rather than necessarily the individual updates. But overall, I think I think this is a good thing. This is what the game needs at the moment, is some real getting down to the nitty gritty and I think we touched a bit on this in the last video where you know there is some core bits that need some work before they worry about planets and you know net, net code and multiplayer is one of them but there's a load other so I'm pretty excited to see that this is the sort of focus they're taking exactly and I think you guys have to think about it this way if the if there are more bugs that are fixed if there aren't so many bugs in the game for new players there's going to be a higher retention rate for sure which means more people to play with more content to see more mods more of everything that you think is positive about a multiplayer game so i really think that this is a good step in the right direction it's not exciting yes there's not much to talk about yes however it's definitely needed we both are agreeing on this point for sure Although one thing we should probably mention, which people will notice from the background footage of this video, is they have actually, without mentioning it in the patch notes, updated the DirectX 9 lighting a little bit. And I really, really like it. I think it looks really cool. It's kind of muted down the colors so they're not quite so bright, and also updated the shadows and the lighting. And it's worth a mention because it does look really cool, and I'm surprised it wasn't in the patch notes. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely changed it, especially on your map that we are like driving around on, you can see that there's a lot more definition and contrast in the hills and topography. And I'm thinking that this might actually have something to do with planets. They may have discovered that it's like kind of sort of pastelled out and not very contrasty on planets and they wanted to change that a little bit. At least that's what I'm hoping. And I think this is probably something we should start talking about because one thing there was on Marek's blog post was a very cool looking screenshot of what I guess is the current development build of the planets. It's certainly not the source code build. I haven't seen a screenshot that's as good quality as that one was and it looked really awesome. It's a desert with trees sitting in the background. Um, I saw somewhere on the post someone said it was an acacia tree. Do not quote me on this oh. but it just it looked really cool. So that's got me really stoked for what's potentially coming. I just think partly this this also, this sort of stabilization period that they're talking about going through is also going to enable them to focus a lot more on getting the planets and the multiplayer going as well. You know, this stress of producing a, a content update every week that actually has new features in it, that's got to take a lot away from your development time. Oh, absolutely. And the reason why I, I almost started to interrupt, you no, know, I was starting to interrupt you is because I re got really excited after I looked at the screenshots again because I just noticed something that I didn't notice before, and that's if you look at the tree in the distance and the at the shot of the red ship landing, you'll notice that there's not that, that fog from the atmosphere that you'd seen in earlier pictures, which means that you can still see the sky, but you don't get that weird fog. It looks much more realistic in this photo, which tells me they've been doing quite a bit of work for the way planets look once you get onto the surface, and that is really encouraging. Especially the second screenshot where you see there's a lot more foliage, there's a lot more grass. It looks a lot more like like a, an actual planet. It's it's really exciting. Well, and I also know that you know, so I, I have the advantage of, I, I do chat with a couple of the guys that 
do some of the development work for Keen and some of the guys that are involved with some of the stuff they're doing. And I, I don't know any inside info particularly. All I know is that they are all seeming really excited at the moment, which can only be a good sign. And I think that's why. I think everyone's starting to feel some pride in what planets are going to become. And I think for everybody in the space engineers community, that's going to be really good news. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I think there's only one last thing that I hope that they add, and that would be atmospheric friction because I want ships to burn up that are too big that enter the atmosphere. I just want to throw that out there one more time. I know I said it last week, but I just want to say it again, just in case the devs are listening, because I really, really would love to see that. It would be cool. And after you mentioned it last week, I did go and check up on it and confirm that while they've mentioned that there will be atmospheres on planets and there will be two, essentially two types of atmosphere, there will be a hostile atmosphere that has no oxygen and then there will be a friendly atmosphere that does. There is no mention of anything beyond that. So it sounds like the atmospheric physics are going to be reasonably basic. But I'm excited nonetheless and I would probably echo Morph's call of aerodynamics and some sort of air resistance would be a very very fun thing to mess around with if possible but i'm stoked regardless all right guys well i think that pretty much covers this week it was not as exciting as we could have hoped but there was still something to talk about so i hope you'll join us next week when i think there'll probably be something a little bit more to talk about or some more bug fixes i guess we'll have to see you guys next week yep thanks a lot guys i hope you enjoyed it a bit and thanks a lot morph it was great talking with you once again and hopefully we'll see you guys next week Thank <laughs> you.